So I got some more bad news about the iPhone 12. It's going to have a smaller battery. Let's get into it. Skip it a button, that up. So we've heard other questionable things about the iPhone 12. We heard it's still going to have a notch. I've heard that from a few sources. And uh, yeah, 2020 and a notch. Wait. This is the Google Pixel 4a. A budget smartphone, and it doesn't have a notch. Has a little bit of bezels on all around the sides, but no notch. Just a little hole punch for the camera. Pixel 4a, 350 bucks. Not sponsored by Google or anything. I'm just stating facts. And Apple's premium phone is still going to have a notch. Yay. Well, one thing I will say that I am excited for is that Apple's going back to like the iPhone 5S design. If you take a look at the picture right here, they're, they're doing those squared off edges. It's going to have a real nice, clean, flat look. And in my opinion, and many other people's opinions, the iPhone 5S was the best looking iPhone of all time. It was the best looking smartphone of all time, I think, anyway. Well, Apple insider Ming Ching Kuo uh, has some more bad news about the iPhone 12. People keep going back and forth on if it's going to have a high refresh display. I personally could give a flying crap about high refresh displays on smartphones. It's nice to have it on my iPad, but on a smartphone, I could take it or leave it. But there's something else that may be a deal breaker for some people, including me. This is what Forbes.com has to say. I'm going to read it to you, then we'll discuss. Breaking this down, Kuo explains that Apple's adoption of sub-6G 5G technology in the iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Plus will increase Apple's costs by 75 to 85 bucks, while the full fat millimeter wave 5G in the iPhone 12 Pro and iPhone 12 Pro Max will add 125 to 135 bucks. Such increases have added 200 to 300 to the final retail price of phones like Samsung's Galaxy flagships. But Kuo says Apple will slash up to 50% off its battery cost by moving the iPhone 12 models to batteries with simpler, smaller designs with fewer layers. The results look to set a circa 10% reduction in battery capacities across the range compared to the iPhone 11 lineup. Given the higher power consumption of 5G, this is a puzzling change and places real pressure on Apple's superlative new A14 chip to pull off some power efficiency miracles. The lower capacities are also thought to be the reason behind Apple's decision to scrap the ProMotion displays on the Pro models. Now, John Prosser, who's a really cool dude, he actually has come to some of my live streams and he has his sources inside of Apple. He thinks there's still a chance for the 120 hertz refresh rate screens. So we'll have to wait and see. Maybe the A14 chip will be so efficient that we won't notice the battery difference, but I will tell you one of the biggest selling points, and I still love it, and it still holds a great charge a year later, is the iPhone 11 Pro Max. You can't kill that battery. I mean, okay, the, I'm not using it as a mobile phone, so it isn't searching for signals, but I'll tell you this. I've been using the 4A. So I just kind of left my iPhone 11 Pro Max on my desk, just chilling there, didn't turn it off. Days later, still is like 50% battery. Days later, the battery in that is amazing. And that was, that's one of the biggest selling points to me on the iPhone 11 Pro Max. With the iPhone 12, if they get rid of that to shoehorn in 5G, that's going to be a tough sell, man, because 5G isn't, okay, I know it's a buzzword. I, I know that a lot of companies are advertising 5G now, but you can't get a 5G signal around me anywhere, man. And honestly, I rather have more battery life and have Apple hold off on 5G for one more year and give, I don't even really care about the ProMotion display, but I rather have a ProMotion display than 5G. I rather have a bigger battery than 5G. That's just me. But I feel like Apple's being pressured because everyone else, I mean, they're even coming out with a Google Pixel 4a 5G. So you could connect to 5G once in the next three years and say you did it on your 4a. Yay. So I guess Apple's feeling the pressure for that. But it'll be interesting. We know the iPhones have been delayed. I want to see what the selling points of them are because 
Yeah, I said the same thing for the 11 Pro Max last year. It looked boring. It didn't look like anything exciting, but it ended up being one of my favorite smartphones of all time. So maybe they'll wow me again. Again, I don't care about the high refresh displays, but they need to offer more with their phone than what it seems like they're offering right now, especially because it's still going to have a notch. Really, Apple? 2020? A notch? I guess they need it for the Face ID tech, but it's going to make that phone look dated. This is Rich of Review Tech USA signing out. Have a go, one. Hey, if you enjoy my content, consider becoming a Review Tech USA member. I'll have a link below in the description. I live stream now on this channel all the time, and it gives you access to cool emoticons to use as well while I live stream. Again, link below in the description. Thank you for your continued support.